Hi there, my name's Robin Johns and I'm the Knowledge and Training Director here at Cato Networks. Are you worried about personal, private or sensitive corporate data being leaked outside your organisation, either intentionally or accidentally? Do you handle financial transactions, healthcare data or any form of PII? Are you concerned about how this data is handled and are you positive that safeguarding measures are in place to ensure that this important data does not leak outside your organisation? Well, fear no longer. Cato Networks now offers Data Loss Prevention, or DLP, within our single pass cloud engine. Let's explore how to configure this feature and conduct a brief test. So here we are in the Cato Management application. First, we need to configure DLP, and that's an incredibly simple thing to do. The first thing that you need to do is come to the top of the page and click on the Security tab. After clicking on Security, you want to click on the DLP configuration item on the left-hand pane. Once you are here, you'll be provided with the content profiles. Content profiles are the lowest denomination of things that we're actually scanning for. This is the content we want to match. So let's click on New and create a new content profile. I'm going to call this content profile PCI DSS. And the description is Monitor for PCI DSS Data. After doing this, we expand the data types, we click Add, and you'll have a list of predefined content types appear automatically. As you can see, we have personally identifiable information, PCI DSS, document classification, and more. And if we expand any of these categories, you can see we have a multitude of individual predefined content types. If you wanted to choose for an individual country, you could click the drop-down and see individual countries, but for the sake of demonstration and speed, let's just focus on these two items. We're looking for credit card numbers with phrases, and if you hover over this question mark, a brief description is displayed, as well as universal credit card number data. Once more, more information. So let's enable these two items, navigate to the bottom, click Apply, and you'll notice our criteria has now been presented. The name is PCI DSS, we're monitoring for PCI DSS data, and we're identifying these individual data types. So let's click Apply to save our configuration. And don't forget to actually click the button Save. We have now created the very basic level of content that we're looking to scan for. We can see that we have now created a profile for PCI DSS, so anytime something happens, we can now monitor for that PCI data. But we've just created a content profile. We've just created something to look for. We haven't actually configured an action. If you would like to see an action, that's where we have to move to our application control window. By moving to the left-hand side, we can click the words application control. The application control window has two sliders at the top of the page. App control is our CASB engine, providing granular application control for cloud apps whilst the data control activates our DLP engine to ensure that data traversing the network adheres to your content standards. The Cato application control window leverages both app and data control rules in sequence to provide maximum benefit and security to your organization. Let's create a data control rule to enforce the PCI DSS content profile we just created. First, move to the right-hand window and click on the new button and select data control. The first thing we need to do is give this a name. So I will say enforce PCI DSS content. We'll give it a description. I'll say block upload of data. And we can choose a priority, severity of high, medium or low. This is for you to decide. For now, I'll choose high. After this, we need to choose an application which this rule will apply to. We can either choose an individual application, a category of applications, or a custom application defined within your network. If choosing application, you can click the drop down and see a list of our cloud application catalog and identified applications to apply this rule towards. However, for this demonstration, we're just going to use any application because I want to monitor any application on the internet, on the web, using or utilizing PCI DSS data. The activity that I wish to monitor will be upload. However, we can also specify download or both as we have a satisfy condition on the right to satisfy any rules or all rules. Please note 
that if you wish to use DLP or data loss prevention, you will require TLS inspection enabled on your account. But for now, we're looking at any application and we're identifying any time a file has been uploaded. Once we have configured the application and the activities, we need to tell our data control rule what it is looking for to block or allow. So by choosing our DLP profiles, you'll notice we have the content profile that we previously created. I will choose PCI DSS, and you will notice it's been added as a line to the content inspection profile. You can specify multiple profiles within this rule, however, for simplicity, we will leave one. Under the DLP profiles, we have file attributes. If we wanted to only search specific types of content, for example, archives, binaries, designs, executables, or office documents, we can do so. And if you hover over the question mark, a description of this rule or the categories ruling is provided. However, this is an optional thing to configure. And for the sake of demonstration, we'll leave this blank. After this, we can choose individual access methods, the source of the traffic that it applies to, either users, hosts, groups, IP, subnets, or anybody. Well, let's just use anybody, as well as the time that this rule applies, either all the time, working hours, or constraint, and the individual actions. Now, as we are going to be blocking PCI DSS data within this rule, I want to choose it from allow to block and ensure that an event has been established. You can configure email notifications to be sent either immediately, hourly, daily, or weekly, but that's up to yourself. Once you've configured all of these rules, click apply and click save. And you'll notice that we now have created a rule to enforce PCI DSS content coming from anywhere, from any application, and we're looking to the activity of uploading. And you are done. It's that simple. Configure TLS inspection, create a content profile, the thing you want to look for, then create a data control rule to start scanning for that when you upload. It's that easy. Data loss prevention is often seen as a very crazy, difficult thing to implement and actually get running. But with Kato, its simplicity is outstanding. Would you like to see this rule in action? Of course you would. In that case, let's hop on over to our trusty friend Slack, where I can show you with this actually working in real time. So here we are in Slack. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Slack and the familiar brand. I'm a fan of the dark mode, but I want to send a file and I have two documents. I have one document that says, hello, unidentified secret agent. Please find the attach the information you need with some credit card numbers. That's one document with credit card information. Now, if I was to try and send this file over the internet, over to a potential malicious hacker, what would happen? Well, simple. You could drag the file into Slack. You could come here. You could see the spinner is working as expected and you can send the file and the file can be sent. This is dangerous. I can see currently that there's six other people in this channel and myself, I could be personally aware of all my data handling and security standards, but I cannot guarantee that the six other people in this channel follow the same practices. My perfectly innocent activity of maybe accidentally sharing PCI data could cause problems and impact your organization. And I know what you're all thinking, Robin, you've just configured a PCI rule, a DLP rule to block this. Why is your data not protected? Why are you not transferring that, that file? And it's quite simple, really. The Kato client is not connected. So what I'm going to do is click that handy dandy button and connect my machine up into the Kato cloud. And we're doing this live. This is an unedited test. We can see that it's connected and it's working. So let's try and transfer this file. A document with no credit card information. It says, hello, unidentified secret agent. I'm working in the shadows of this company to get the credit card details for you. I'll send them over later today. Ooh. And what I'm going to do is try and send that over Slack. And you'll see it spins, it spins, it spins. And within a few seconds, I can actually send this file. That's great. The text in this file does not match the content profile that we have configured within the DLP rule. However, if I get my other document with credit card information, which we previously sent, you can see it says, hello, unidentified secret agent. You don't need Grammarly. Here's the information. Here's the credit card numbers. What we will do is try and send that same file over and you'll see it spins and spins and spins. And if I try and send it, oh, I cannot. 
we get the warning red exclamation mark of doom. This exclamation mark is protecting you from having data accidentally be exfiltrated across your network. Very, very easy. The joy of our data loss prevention feature is that this happens in line with no additional deployments required on your endpoints. Instead, you just configure the policy within the Cato management application, and then it applies to all edges. If we return back to the Cato management application, you can see that it's just this single rule. And if I wanted to see the impact of this rule, maybe I can just come over to the monitoring tab. I can look at the events. And within a few moments, I can start seeing that we have PCI block events within Slack. We can start seeing who, what, where, why, when, and how the file was transferred, giving you instant visibility using our DLP engine with only a few seconds of time invested. Why waste time trying to implement a DLP technology from other vendors when Kato has a DLP technology plus much more within our single pass card architecture?